Wake up, sleepyhead. Who is behind you? You were having a nightmare. I am still having one. There is someone behind your your ass. There is someone behind your ass. Thanks for letting me practice last night. I did. I think I did a great job. Made us all some breakfast this morning to celebrate. Breakfast with what? Ooh, that's a surprise. Good morning, evening, and night, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. Today we're going to be playing Cooking Companions. Uh, this game came out a little bit a while ago. They've been updating it too as the years have gone on. It came out, I want to say, two, three years ago. I'm not too sure. Uh, I'll figure it out. If I make another video, uh, I'll post about it when the release date is. But yeah, so... We're just gonna hop right into a new game. It's supposed to be a psychological horror game, but as you can see, it doesn't look that way at all. So let's just hop right into it. That was an abrupt cut. This game is not suitable for children or those who are easily disturbed. Do you wish to continue? All right, there's your lesson. There's your lesson and your warning right there. Uh. Yeah, just abruptly end to become serious. Okay, let's go. Let's play. Oh, God. Gregor, that walk was brutal, but this cabin is amazing. Full kitchen, running water, it really has everything. Finally, a place I can read a good book in peace. I can't wait to... 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 <gasps> All right. I'm sorry, everyone. It must be the dust. Get all those allergies under control, Mariah. Don't worry, guys. I'm sure with a little bit elbow grease, we can make this cabin shine. So, are you volunteering to clean, Gregor? No. Not many supplies here. Guess we'll have to go out to get what we need. There's a fireplace for making stew. Let's gather up some firewood, okay? Leave that to me, little guy. St stop trying to be so smart. I'll tidy up around the cabin. Need to save Mariah from dying due to this dust. Ha ha ha. Hey! Allergies are nothing to joke about, Karen. She's not dead yet, Pipsqueak. Calm down. Thanks, Anatoly. I think I'll go foraging outside. With over... 450 mosses, 900 fungi, and 70 slime molds. There's bound to be treasure up here. I, I can't. I hate the voice I'm doing for him. I'm so... I feel so bad. Roughing it up is fun. Anatoly knows so much about edible foods. We're in good hands. I think the slime molds would be the most delicious. Most certainly not. <laughs> what about the fungi? Do you even, do you even know which ones are poisonous, Anatoly? I, I, I couldn't figure it out. You can be the canary in the coal mine, Anatoly. I'm not ending up a corpse here. Eek! Keep both eyes open, little guy. Plenty of wolves and brown bears around for your tiny, stupid ass. <laughs> Doesn't even know what plants are not poisonous in the woods. <laughs> Gotta be kidding me. They won't be a problem. I read up on 10 different techniques to incapacitate them. Dog. Dog. Number one is... Anatoly! Oh yeah, sorry Mariah. Got carried away again. <laughs> I help Anatoly look for food. I'm definitely better at warding off wild animals. If we come up empty-handed, we can always eat some of the food we've brought. You mean the emergency rations? Bad idea, chump. Hey, Anatoly and Mariah are getting the food. Gregor is gathering the firewood. That makes you our designated chef. Everyone's looking at you expectantly. You nod. Very excited to try your cooking. All right, everyone. Let's go to work while there's still sunlight. Later. 
Mariah, Anatoly, Gregor. The three exit the cabin, leaving you and Karen alone. I think Anatoly put the supplies in the kitchen. Thanks for helping out with the cooking. Tutorial to save the game, right click or hit the escape button on your keyboard to pull up the menu. Okay. There we go. This menu will also allow you to adjust volume levels or exit the title screen to view unlockables. Please note, going back to the main menu or exit the game without saving will remove your progress. You may be, be sure to save. Do you have any experience making meals? Will you butter them up or wind up on the chopping block achievement? Huh, that's wild. Of course! <laughs> Is that so? Hmm. Looking at you, I think you'd be good at serving up food poisoning, right? It looks like Karen will remember that. Anyways, going to check out the living room. Let's talk later. She'll remember that. Telltale. Karen heads to the living room and starts dusting a little bit. You decide to look around the kitchen and to find the ingredients for the meal tonight. You never know what you'll find around the cabin. Clues and secrets may be revealed by searching the area more than once. Why not give it a try? Why don't you give it a search first? Behind the woodpile, there's nothing but cobwebs. Thankfully, no spiders. The drawers. You check the drawers on the left. Just some dirty knives. The cupboards. The first cupboards are empty. Anatoly must put the supply somewhere else. The drawers. You check the drawer by the mouse hole. Mouse hole. Some kind of mold is growing in this one. Maybe Karen will find it appetizing. The drawers. You check the drawer above the woodpile. Something is making it difficult to open. You pull it with all your might. Let me... Okay. It's time. Champette, sound off. Onion! Never fear, Onion is here. Like my cousin Cornbread says, I'll rise to the occasion. Raspberry! Always marry raspberry. Cabbage. Quiet. Oh, yeah? Potato? Cabbage stuffed me into this drawer. I'm pretty sure this counts as kidnapping. Hey, ho, ho, Where are the chompettes? Why talk with those boring humans? Yes, All they have to give you is drama. Some chats with us and said we'll share valuable recipes you can cook. We'll share with you our secret chompette recipes. Collect them all to become a five-star chef. You can find unlock recipes in the main menu under extra, but be sure to save the game. To celebrate, here's your first recipe card. Cabbage. Roasted eggplant with sesame and pomegranate. You unlocked oh, your first recipe. Yeah. If you ever want to talk, just come to the drawer. Chompettes, uh -huh. let's move out. Okay. Cabbage rudely slams the drawer closed. You wonder if you just what you just saw was real. You're slightly worried about what this means for your mental state, but only slightly. Hey, did you find the supplies? You shake your head. Anatoly lied. He actually put them in the bedroom. Idiot. Here you go. You got the emergency supplies. Karen leaves you alone. You start a fire with some wood and get to work on cooking dinner. Tonight's entree, vegetable stew. In a large saucepan over medium heat, you heat up some water with potatoes, carrots, and celery in it. 15 minutes later, you drain the pan and set the vegetables aside. Placing some butter in the saucepan, you melt it over medium heat. Throwing some chopped onions in, you cook about 10 minutes. The onions are tender and translucent. Perfect. Your next mix is in some flour, salt, pepper, and heavy cream into the saucepan, adding the vegetables to the mixture. Hours pass. Ooh. We're back. More firewood. Oh, my bad. We found some wild sorrel. Maybe tomorrow we'll have a bigger bounty. Anatoly's burying the lead. We saw a red deer. M Mariah spotted it. Yeah, that's great. Anyways, killed 17 spiders today while you were out looking at deer. Yeah! That should come as no surprise. There's over 160 sp 60 species of spiders here. Oh. 160? Don't worry, Mariah. I'm sure they were all in the bathroom or something. Heh, <laughs> no. Almost all of them were near the couch. Parker! 
I was gonna sleep on that couch, Parker! That's where 16 of them were. I'm not sleeping on that couch again. Hmm. And there's only two beds in the bedroom. Don't sweat it, Mariah. I can sleep anywhere, so I'll sleep in the rocking chair. I'll sleep with one eye open, just in case any of them swarm the couch. Thanks, Gregor. Karen and Anatole, you two take the bedroom. T Thanks, big guy. Joke's on you, Gregor. I always plan on taking one of the beds. Hey, Anatoly, I snored louder than a lumberyard. Ah. Sweet dreams, chump. You turn your back to the bubbling vegetable stew and try a bite. Ooh, this tastes pretty good. You cooked vegetable stew. That looks pretty good, honestly. You set the table and ask everyone to dig in. How could this possibly go wrong? Oh, wow. This smells delicious. Thank you. You must be a world-class chef. Karen takes a bite. It's bland as hell. Karen! Tastes like every other vegetable stew I've ever had. So generic. Could probably use some meat next time. Gross! For a side dish, we could bake some bread and utilize the Fragaria Vesca, also known as strawberry. Bro, did you really just pull up the scientific name of strawberries on me, bro? For some jam. I'm about to... Man, take off your glasses. You're probably like Daphne, bro. You go... No, not Daphne. Velma. You go blind. Probably blind as hell. I wonder if you're the first one to go. Nobody cares, Pipsqueak. Thank you. Everyone laughs at Karen's polite ribbing. Nothing makes you happier than cooking a great meal for friends. This could very well be the best day you've ever had. You go to bed stuffed. Okay. Day one. Hey, you up? I just sleep. I was so warm last night, I didn't even need a blanket. What time is it? About one hour till dawn. Will you two pipe down? Trying to sleep over here. Gregor, the birds outside aren't making much noise yet. We didn't bring many supplies, remember? Better to get a head start on gathering food. I honestly can't see the trees outside right now. Gregor, did you see any spiders last night? There was a small one in the bathroom. Ah. Actually, I did see a centipede by the sink. Mariah turns a little pale. Karen's messing with you, Mariah. Let's find more than wild sorrel today, oh my lord. Yeah. If you're lucky, little guy, maybe I'll teach you how to catch some wild brown trout. What's with you and me, big guy? Anatoly's herbalism books. Oh. Anatoly's herbalism books say that there's many more spe species of plants to eat out here. Let's leave the fish alone. You know, I'm not uh, into meat. That's a shame. I'd wake up early to go fishing. Cheer up, Karen. We'll get to observe the trout at the very least. Maybe we'll see more red deer today. That sounds like a waste of time, Gregor. Maybe we'll find some blackthorn berries. I love blackthorn berries. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back later. Can you watch our stuff today? You nod. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, wrong person. Thanks. Huh? Don't steal anything, okay? You nod. I'm gonna steal everything. Mariah, Anatoly, Gregor, and Karen leave the cabin with a hop to their step. You're alone, but thankfully you have a drawer of chomp to keep you company. Explore a different part of the cabin. You only get one choice, then the day will end. Oh. Let's check out... Uh, the basement. Let's go to the basement. This door goes into the basement. There's no reason to go into the basement right now. You wait for the others to return. What? 
We're back. See, knock it off, Mariah. It's pretty rare to be scared of one. It's it's not. <laughs> Who knew the big guy would be so scared of? S Shut up. You don't understand. I don't think anyone understands, Gregor. It was just a marmot, Gregor, not a monster. Mariah laughed so hard that your ears rang. <laughs> <laughs> Tears are rolling down Mariah's cheeks. She's laughing so hard that she's about to hyperventilate. Stop Mariah from hyperventilating? Nah. Let her, let her, absolutely not. One less mouth to feed, right? You don't get it. It's pretty personal. Then please explain, big guy. I, uh... Gregor looks incredibly uncomfortable. <laughs> Let's leave him alone. We found some raspberries and elderberries near the cabin. Quite the selection of berries. We also found more wild sorrel. Is this going to be enough for a good meal? Everyone is looking at you for an answer. You decide to do an inventory of all available ingredients. It takes you a while, but you decide on your specialty, cabbage rolls. You first bring a large pot of water to a boil. You let the cabbage leaves boil for two minutes, draining the pot into the sink. In a medium mixing bowl, you combine some cooked rice, onion, and egg, salt, and pepper, along with some tomato sauce. You use the hands to mix thoroughly and decide to wash your hands after it won't come off. Dividing the rice mixture evenly between the cabbage leaves, you then roll them up and tie a string around them so they can stay in one piece. You place the cabbage rolls in a large skillet over medium heat, pouring the rest of the tomato mixture over the top, covering it, and bring it to a boil. You reduce the heat to low and let the cabbage rolls simmer for about 40 minutes, being sure to baste it with the liquid. They're just staring at me. Those look pretty good. You cook cabbage rolls! Mariah looks optimistic, Karen looks skeptical, Anatoly looks curious, Gregor looks thrilled. You watch intently as everyone takes the first bite. Yeah, eat my food, damn it. Eat it. <laughs> now, you like it now, Karen? That's pretty darn good. Wow, I could eat the whole batch myself. I think vegetable stew tasted better. I don't know how tender the cabbage is. <laughs> the sauce is pretty red. Did you use fresh tomatoes for it? It really adds to it. Spoon some of the liquid on top of it. You'll thank me later. Anatoly. Oh, wow, a spoon? Incredible. It's definitely growing on me. <laughs> like spooning. <laughs> Thanks again for cooking. This really was something special. Everyone leaves the dishes behind for you to do. I really hate that, that. I don't know why. I don't know why. Not happening. You settle in and go to bed. Everyone goes to bed full. Tomorrow will be another great day. Day two? Day two. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Again, Gregor. Can you leave it, let us sleep in? Not today. Why? Storm clouds are gathering outside. We need to find some food before it begins to downpour. Gregor, you're overreacting. We have enough food to last us a while. Enough food? I thought we used most of the supplies for last night's dinner. He's... He's right. The meal you made was delicious, but I used a lot of what we had. Gregor's also correct. Precipitation is unusually high in this area, with many areas being high risk for flooding. It'd be foolish to not go out and look for food today. You really think it will flood? Thankfully, the cabin is on high ground, but that doesn't mean we're safe from floodwaters. <laughs> <laughs> I love the- I love the voice. I love it. I love it for him. It's always possible. It's always a possibility, so it can't hurt to be prepared. You're losing it, Gregor. Karen, there's nothing to worry about. I think Gregor's right, Karen. Huh? It won't hurt to prepare for the worst. Hmm. I think she's right, Karen. Be able to prepare, prepare to fail. <laughs> Anatoly. 
Let's go and prepare for the storm. Foraging should be key priority today. There are plenty of edible foods. And it has better odds than trying to hunt. I keep changing the voices. I keep changing for him specifically. Give me a few minutes, SpongeBob, and I'll plan on our route on some paper. <laughs> Let me help, little guy. Anatoly and Gregor head to the bedroom to consult the map. Mariah and Karen are still hanging around. Unfortunately, in life, you can't make everyone happy. When given a choice to speak to a character, choose wisely. You can only select one. Try to max out your bond with certain characters for unique dialogue and scenarios. Which one would you like to talk to? Mariah or Karen? Mariah kind of... I don't want to talk to either one of them. I want to talk to Gregor. I'll talk to Karen. Even though she hates me. Hey, this paper nailed to the wall looks pretty ancient. What were the old days like? Eh, extremely brutal. The, the people died, plague, nuclear war, you know, there's a lot of stuff. A lot, you know? Hurricanes, tsunamis. Uh, it's, it's brutal. Oh, really? You'll have to share the details with me later. Okay? Karen will not be able to stomach your stories. Why? But you still agree you'll tell her the details later. Karen will definitely remember that. Your relationship- There's relationships? No! 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 You hear her shout from the other room. It's a horror game, there's no way. Gregor and Anatoly come back for the meeting, Gregor is blushing slightly. Hey. Can you cook something while we're out? You nod. Thank you. Alright everyone, we have a run now. Let's beat those rain clouds. The group leaves determined as ever. You have the cabin all to yourself. What's that noise? Sounds like it's coming from the kitchen. Huh? Radio? What's going on with that radio? You didn't even notice it on the ground while you walked in. Somebody leave this radio here. It looks newer than anything you've seen before. Seems to be broken. Better hold on to this. Before you cook dinner, what should you check out? Inspect the kitchen. Hello! Sup, Cabbage. Good to see you again. Can... Thought you abandoned us. Potato hates us. He clearly does. Why are you trying to fool them? Go ahead and make those meals you enjoy so much. What? Raspberry? No thanks. That vegetable stew? Gross. You already stunk up the cabin last night. Spare us a repeat. Onion. It almost smelled as bad as you, stinky. Almost. Aren't you going to give them the recipe, Onion? I guess. Hey, ever notice those four humans don't give you any recipes? Those monsters. That's why you should spend more time with us. Right? Of course. I have the perfect recipe for you today. It'll make the kitchen smell nice afterwards, and it will impress dinner guests. The borscht boy, recipe. Boy. Don't burn down the cabin making it today, okay? You nod. <laughs> Don't be a stranger. Chompettes? Mosey out. You shut the drawer and wait for the others to return back. Another recipe for the books. Mariah's back early today. What? Hey, the others are still looking for food outside. Anatoly found some more berries, but nothing that will feed all of us. Please don't tell the others. But I'm a little worried about our supplies. I crunched the numbers and we don't have enough food, even with rationing. It'll last if there's a big storm if we get stuck here. Mariah seems disappointed in your inventory management. What? Can you even- Can you try cooking with a little less this evening? You nod. Thank you. You've done such a great job with meals so far. You're very, very sweet. Is Mariah blushing a little bit? <laughs> Oh my god! Mariah will remember that. Okay. I don't want to talk to you. Maybe you can teach me to cook sometime? You nod. Looking forward to it. Hey, you could hold cooking classes here someday. Rudely interrupting a tender moment, the others burst into the cabin. Don't be so down, everyone. We got tons of good berries. Jam is so bland without any sugar. 
Do you have any sugar? You shake your head sadly. Yikes. Turn that frown upside down, Karen. Who knows what tomorrow will bring? I'm not smiling for you, Gregor. Eek, uh, missed out. The sunset was really tremendous on our way back. Hues of orange, red, even a little purple poking out. Red sky at night, sailors delight. Red sky in morning, sailors take warning. So we can expect the sailors delight tomorrow? That's awesome! You're such an optimist, big guy. We must have walked a few miles today. Gorgeous sights. You can even see, you can see snow on the tips of the mountains. That rumble sounded like a dying calf. He looked from person to person trying to determine who it was. It was definitely Mariah. Mariah! I'd recognize that sound from anywhere. Gah! Guilty! Mariah looks embarrassed, but the group laughs at her honesty. Except for you. You search your mind for something to say, but all you can think of is an old riddle. Ahem. Those who have it do not want it. Those who have it least succeed. Those who have it for too long perish. When you feed it, it gets smaller. What am I? Hmm. Dust? Try again, big guy. Everyone is pondering the answer. Mariah's face lights up. I got it. It is it is it hunger? Correct! Yeah, I was gonna guess that. So uh what's on the menu tonight, Chef? Bread and jam. Crush the berries in your small mortar and pestle and spreading it on some crusty bread. You cooked raspberry jam and bread. Crumby situation, yike. Bare cupboards was the achievement, oh boy. I think this is when it starts to turn. Cannibalism's on the horizon. The bread's a little tough. Gregor, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. But this homemade jam is to die for. Sorry. Mariah. No, you're right, Gregor. This bread stinks. Mariah. Everybody laughs. You're not sure this could be called a meal, but it's got the job done. Everyone thanks you for dinner and heads off to sleep. You go to bed wishing you had more. You have a strange dream. Something is riding on your back, and it's becoming a nuisance. You try to see it in the mirror, but you can't get a good look at it. You try almost everything, but it won't get off. The pain between your shoulder blades is getting worse by the minute. You wander away from the cabin, stumbling by a river to soak your pain in cool water. You didn't want things to come to this, but you've exhausted all other options. You swim out to the middle. Rocks on the bottom cut your feet. You slip out to fall to your knees. You lean back, trying to submerge the thing underneath the waters. But it won't drown. It won't drown. It won't drown. You splash frantically, plunging your head beneath the water. The current takes you downstream. You try swimming to the shore, but it's no use. Water fills your mouth and nostrils. After a minute, you stop struggling against the current. As you gaze up at the sky, you feel it leaving your back, drifting into the sky as you sink into the bottom. As you take your last gasp, you see what was on your back staring into your eyes. But you don't even have the air in your lungs to scream. You wake in a cold sweat. What the... Okay, 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 okay. Here we go, yep. It's starting to turn. The game's starting to get a little... It's pushing it a little tiny bit. Wake up! Let me save. Okay. Let me grab a snack. I'm gonna grab a snack. Wake up! Sorry, you were making strange noises in your sleep. What's going on, Gregor? Did the lightning wake you up? It woke me up. Uh -huh. I tried to fall back asleep, but it's so loud. Uh, let's just get back to sleep and talk about this in the morning. Everyone nods in agreement and gets back to bed. Huh, interesting. Another nightmare? Except for you. You can't fall back asleep. You still have goosebumps from the nightmare. Exclamation point. Karen's snoring is louder than a sawmill. You find it very loud and very distracting. You don't sleep a wink. 
Everyone is now up and awake in the cabin. You hear the front door open and quickly slam shut. Anatoly sounds petrified. I looked at the door and we're completely surrounded by floodwaters. Looks like sailors take warning was more appropriate for today. I love that joke. Maybe it'll clear up tomorrow. Eh. You can't steal big guy's optimism, Karen. Why the hell not? That's all he has going for him. Eh. He's also good at chopping wood, though. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. I hate it. This character, Anatoly, I swear. <laughs> okay. Knock it off, you two. Mariah, do you think it will clear up tomorrow? I give it 27% chance of it clearing up tomorrow. Based on what? I was bored stiff, so I wrote a book on local precipitation levels for the last 20 years in the living room. <sighs> Sounds like you're stealing Anatoly's thunder. Anatoly, you're a book nerd, right? Why didn't you read it? Eh. Couldn't make it past the cover. Is that right? Yeah. That bookshelf has some great books on art... Artisan crafting and natural sciences. I'm, I, I was confused there for a sec. Why let him sit there gathering dust? How'd you arrive at a 27% chance of it clearing up tomorrow? It's easy. Take the time of year, multiply it by a factor of... Mariah begins to explain meteorology to you. She isn't dumbing any of this down. It's similar to... Equal zero, where... So the first thing you need to understand... Minutes of explanation feel like hours. You look over at Anatoly. He's listening intently to Mariah. So intently, he hasn't blinked yet. You can see his eyes drying up. A tear rolls down one of his cheeks. This is brutal to watch. Mariah finally wraps up her lecture. She ends with a bow. Nobody claps. Tough crowd. Womp womp. Mariah, that was awe-inspiring. <laughs> Womp womp, he lost me a few minutes in, but it's okay. Womp womp. Uh, I didn't understand a word of it. <laughs> yeah. And it totally turns to you. Anyway, there's no telling how long this will last. We can't leave the cabin until these floodwaters stop. I know our food situation is a little... Why'd she... Ooh, she got a little already. Our food situation is a little tight, but I know you'll make the right decisions. I believe in you. You're a stupid piece of shit, I swear to God. Me too. I know what you did. Uh-oh. It looks like we have enough leftover berries for more bread and raspberry jam. I'll pass on the jam. Just give me more crusty bread. Okay. Everyone laughs. Crusty bread. Crusty bread. Not stale bread, crusty bread. Except for you. Yeah. With everyone stranded in the cabin, you need to keep everyone fed and happy. You sneak out to the kitchen while everyone's still talking. Let's use up all the food right now. Let's make it, let's, let's turn this game into more horror. You get out some crusty bread and get to work making some more jam. With the kitchen to yourself, you decide to check in on the chompettes. Yo, what's good, Cabbage, my dog? What's up? Don't worry. As long as the chomp pets, I'll make sure none of the humans know about us. Onion. That big guy would try eating me like an apple. So definitely don't tell them about us. I hate you. I hate you so much. <laughs> Are your plans going awry? <laughs> oh, oh, whoa. <laughs> okay, oh. Bowser. Get another cornbread classic for you. Did you hear about the bread maker's bakery burning down? No. Her business is now toast. 
like her kids. <laughs> okay. That one's been done to death. Do you know how raspberry and milk were introduced? You tell her no. Raspberry! Raspberry milk shake. You allow an audible groan. <laughs> Did Cornbread teach you that one? Nope. Waste the entire day thinking about that terrible pun. Potato hates us. <laughs> it was worth the time and effort, Raspberry. Maybe you'll win the annual Chomp Back Comedy Competition this year. Raspberry! Of course. Onion! Not while I'm here. I won't choke on stage this year. Isn't that every year? Bread. <laughs> Cabbage is about to slap you, Potato. We still talk about that closing line, Bread. You're going to do great things this year. Anyways, don't even think of eating us if you're hungry. Chompettes stick together through thick and thin. Rain or shine. Feast and famine. <laughs> huh. Potato, I swear to God, repeat the line. We're locking you up again. Life or death. That's right. Chompettes. <laughs> Move it out. Okay, so Potato clearly is uh, very miserable. Chompette somehow managed to close the drawer on themselves. You bring the crusty bread and jam into the living room. What'd I make him? Karen interrupts as you bring in the food. It took you long enough. Karen looks at the two slices of bread left in the mason jar of raspberry jam. There's mold on these last two slices of bread. You can eat mold. You can eat the bread. You can still eat it. You're gonna starve if you don't eat it. Karen is right. It is mold. Dude, it's probably like crappy little green crust. What the hell is the matter with you? You grip the... Oh, you grip the knife tightly in your hand. You think this is enough for five of us? Wait, 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 wait. We can't throw this bread away. It's all we have left. Ragger's right. Anatoly, will most spores give us food poisoning? And, uh, I'm no scientist. Sorry. Um, let's pick off as much mold as we can. We can't leave with the floodwaters. This will have to last us another day. Everyone grimly nods, ripping apart their piece like a pack of wolves. You can eat it. it it's bread. It, there's no way it went moldy in one day. Y'all are going wild already for no reason. Why is there a squirrel on your shoulder if you can just eat the squirrel? Gregor seems to unhinge his jaw and eat it in one bite. He looks like a duck eating bread. Thanks again. Bread and jam isn't much of a meal. What's well, more than we had when we left Ukraine? Oh! Uh. Oh! Plenty of rainwater outside, so at least we won't die of dehydration. But until this storm is over, nobody should leave the cabin. It should clear up if we just give it a chance. <laughs> Anatoly, where are you getting that information from? One of the books on the shelf on, up about the climate they hear. Uh, you're so you're, you're illiterate, so that definitely is a lie. Eh. I've seen him reading. Little guy's been studying. I'm serious! He pretends to read those books because he wants to think he's smart. But I can tell he's just staring at the page, faking it. What do you think? I'm gonna agree with Karen, I don't think. But Anatoly doesn't know his weather conditions from a hole in the ground. Karen is correct. Uh -huh. Huh. You're funny. Uh, I... Keep pretending with those books, Anatoly. Brutal Karen. I found an old picture book in the living room, Anatoly. She just roasted you, dog. Let me know if you want it, small fry. Yo. Karen is going for the throat. Karen. Karen smiles at you. 
I guess let's call it a day. Yeah. Sure. Everyone shuffles off to their sleeping areas. Six minutes later. What? I'm glad you called out Anatoly's bluff. You continue to impress... It's a shame Anatoly is sleeping in the same bedroom. I should have never let him be the one to share with me. But what if it was just me and you? I'm sure we can study and squeeze a few novels in- You're crazy! No 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 I no 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 I see how quick you snap. You not- Do I not get a choice? Well, we'll have to see if we can nick out- We have- If we can kick him out at some point, right? Or you'll have to tell me about that and it's a What? Really cool pictures in there. Karen looks like she has a crush on you. Let me know if you're ever free for a lesson. Okay. Okay, no 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 Karen walks away looking very happy. No 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 You are definitely sure Karen will remember that. No 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 Starting my fucking mod lower. No, 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 no. I saw how quick you snapped. You are not. No, no, no. I just realized I am on a dark path. This has to be the bad ending. I'm on the dark path. There's no redemption. This is bad right now. I'm screwed already. You, you get ready for bed and put a blanket on. You go to sleep very hungry. Day four. You don't dream the entire night, but you sleep through everyone waking up. And that's how fast a deer can run if it's startled. Whoa! Incredible. Impressive. Yawn. I wish we had a deer here. With the food getting lower, let's just skip today's meal. Karen's already pissed off. <laughs> no! Mariah... It's only for one day. Yeah. You honestly should. Various cultures and religions have practiced fasting throughout history. Karen's about to slap him. That doesn't make us feel any better, Anatoly. What options do we have? Our food wasn't rationed properly. I want to know what, 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 I want to know what they're talking about with you, what Mariah was saying about Ukraine. What do you mean, Ukraine? Where are you guys coming from? Because all I know is you guys just, we were literally sitting in a cabin. You didn't know me until you talked to me. When the game started. So tell me. Why are you... Are you coming from Ukraine? You, you're coming from Ukraine. So something happened. And this game came out not too long ago. I didn't... Mm, I don't like it. I don't like it. Bye, Anatoly. Anatoly leaves mumbling to himself. So passive-aggressive of him. So submissive of him. Everyone goes to a separate seat. Karen in the bedroom. Gregor in the living room. Mariah in the kitchen. And Anatoly in the bathroom. Who do you want to speak to? I mean, I'm already- at, I might as well try and go Max. I might as well do Max relationship and see how bad of an ending I can get, you know? I don't care for Anatoly. He really annoys me. Mariah is, like, depressed right now, and I don't think she wants to talk to anyone. Gregor's just a big old cuddly teddy bear, so he'll talk with anyone anything, but I don't think anything serious will come out of it. Karen, I just want to see how bad of an ending we can get. Speak with Karen. Okay. Already foreshadowing. I don't like that she has a knife just on hand. Looks like she's just slicing away at a block of wood. Hey. Can I let you in on a secret? I've actually enjoyed your cooking so far. The others expect me to be rude and mean, so I have to keep that reputation up, right? Can't have anyone thinking I'm soft. You're not sure where this is coming from. Promise me you'll give me some cooking lessons soon. Okay. She's not ready yet, but you nod politely. Ready for what? Thank you. You're definitely sure Karen will remember that. Your relationship is stronger. You leave Karen by herself. Let me save. All right. Everyone looks pretty down this evening. Yep, what'd I say? Anatoly is just making me angry with how he looks. 
Gregor got depressed. Oh, that my boy. I should have talked to Gregor. Oh God. I feel bad for my boy Gregor. I should have talked to him. He looks down. Mariah, wish the rain would just stop. You're all doing. You're all doing great. We we must almost be at the end of this nightmare. Shut up, please, Anatoly. Gregor, when Gregor's down, I'm down. I'm so hungry. Me too. You are too. You wish everyone a good night and get ready for bed. Oh. Oh boy. Oh boy, we're getting to the scary stuff, right? What's happening? Cannibalism, Wendigo, what? I heard Ukraine, Ukrainian Wendigo, Ukrainian Wendigo. You are go, you go to bed with a growling stomach. Growl, growl, growl. You have a strange dream. Oh God. A boy is yelling at you in the kitchen. You keep telling him to lie down the tray, but he keeps shaking his head, calling you names. So you do it? You lie down on the tray and make your body as flat as a board. You show him how it's done. His anger turns to courage. And he pushes you into the oven. As the stench of burning hair fills your lungs, you see him sneering back at you. You wake in a cold sweat. Whoa. Oh boy, oh boy. These dreams have to mean something. The dreams mean something, right? They're not just random. They can't be just random. These cannot just be random dreams. Everyone seems to be sleeping in later than normal. Their stomachs must have kept them awake all night. The rain is still pouring outside. You can barely make out the trees from the windows. You hear a stirring of blankets, arms, and legs. Mariah looks petrified. I couldn't sleep. Anatoly has bags under his eyes. This storm is too loud. Karen looks out of it. Whoa. The cabin was creaking so much last night. It sounded... Uh, okay, let me... Let me... Okay, it's starting to get wild. Like, look at this. Look at my save file. Look at... Let's look at the save file. Wait, 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 wait. Let's look at the save file. Look. Her, Smiley. Him, like, oh my god, what's happening? Her, Smiley. Now everyone terrified. It sounded... Alive. Gregor looks a little gaunt. Gregor! I got a good look out the window. And? Couldn't see anything due to the rain. <laughs> Great observation, Gregor. There's my boy. He's just, he's trying to be positive. Everyone's down, he's trying to be positive. I like Gregor. He was so hungry, I was so hungry last night. I kept pacing around my bed. Karen turns to you. When is this going to end? I checked outside the door again. Floodwaters keep rising. Unfortunately, we're going to need to stay put unless one of us wants to drown in rainwater. As soon as the weather lets up, we'll be able to scavenge for supplies. How close is nearest town? I don't know. Didn't you have a map on you? I think I dropped it while we were running after Gregor. I'm sure it'll show up eventually. You know, in the water, after it's dissolved. <laughs> Mariah and Anatoly go away as a sheet. How are we going to find our way back now? Well. I have to ride out the storm. Mariah looks at you. We're down to our last slice of bread. I don't know how much longer we can off eating the group stares at you it'll clear up in no time maybe you're right the group looks worried they all gravitate to an area you can tell Gregor's putting on fake optimism and Mariah's having trouble which one do you want to speak with today <gasps> um Mariah was a Debbie Downer since day one, kinda, like immediately shit started going bad and she started immediately getting anxious. I'm gonna talk with Gregor. What's my boy doing? 
Oh, hey. I know you already searched the kitchen. But I had to double check. A fool's errand. I wish everyone was in better spirits. It can't rain forever. Right? Rainfall in this area can last days to weeks. You tell Gregor to stay strong. <laughs> you know what? Thank you. Oh, I made him blush? The group is really thankful for your kindness. Gregor blushes a little bit. I always, I always wanted to be one that kept everyone in good spirits. But it's obvious you don't, that you do that much better. Gregor's looking at you fondly. You sure Gregor will remember that? Oh, okay, we got Gregor's reputation. Let's go, my boy Gregor. The rain is pounding hard against the wooden cabin, but at least none of it is getting inside. You tell Gregor to keep his spirits up and join the others. Yeah, Gregor, keep everyone happy. Oh. Uh-oh. You call everyone together, they all look grim. You could cut the tension in the room with a knife. Everyone is staring at you. They're expecting the last piece of bread for dinner. You bring it out. Everyone cannot take their eyes off it. You instruct everyone to take a pinch. And slowly all five of you tear it apart like a wishbone. Everyone studies their piece of bread carefully. Wondering how long it will last. Karen is the first to eat hers. She chews each bite a few hundred times before swallowing. Anatoly chews it cautiously, opening his mouth once before he finishes each bite. Mariah nibbles on it silently, eyes wide, moving from person to person. And Gregor. Gregor just pops in his mouth like a cherry. It was gone in an instant. The group thanks you awkwardly. It's not much, but you've run out of options. You wish everyone good night and get ready for bed. You go to bed starving. Oh boy! Day six! Uh oh. Good morning! Mariah's pissed off morning. Let me check if the rain stopped. I could hear it. I saw it. And it's still flooding. What are we going to do? Humans can live about two to three weeks without food. Water isn't a concern. Rainfall should end a day or two, right? Actually... Precipitation can occur more than 215 days a year here. What, do you really think it'll rain that long? Anatoly, it's been days already. What makes you think it'll stop soon? Eh. Relax, everyone. Let's see how long we can ride this out. Fingers crossed it's done by tomorrow. Panic is slowly creeping in. Everyone's looking scared, but you need to survive. Karen and Gregor begin to discuss next options. Do you want to speak with Mariah in the kitchen or Anatoly in the living room? Think instead about everything you've done wrong and how you've doomed everyone. Could you have rationed the supplies better? You crunch the numbers one more time. You could have reduced the amount of vegetables used in the stew, but it was their first day. You had to impress them. Was there anything you could have done differently? Probably not. Mariah, Anatoly, Gregor, Karen. You wonder if they're upset with you? Gregor calls the group over for a meeting. Oh, Gregor. I don't think any of us can take this much longer. Gregor's voice starts to crack. I don't want to ask this, but it's time. 
One of us needs to go outside and search for food. Everyone is silent. I'll go. <laughs> Mariah! I used to swim all the time near my house. So I probably have the best chance of swimming through the floodwaters. No! Let me go instead. You won't get very far if anything happens to your glasses, Anatoly. You're blind as a mole rat, remember? That's true, but... Little guy. Let me go. Great, you're right. Sounds good to me. Karen! His arms are definitely the longest, so he'd probably be the best at climbing trees out of all of us. No. That wouldn't be right, Gregor. Let me go instead. I get that- I get that none of these options are good ones. But we need to find food or help. Gregor grabs a branch from the wood pile. He cuts it into different measurements. Since we can't come to a consensus, let's draw for it. Each pick one for my hand. And the shortest will go outside to search for food. You're not worried about drawing? You saw Gregor cut the branch lengths. So you can tell which is the biggest one of the bunch. Oh, You pick it. You watch the others intently. Will it be Gregor? Anatoly? Karen, will it be m m Looks like I've got the shortest. Mariah? Mariah. It's okay. I watched Anatoly forge earlier. Let me save. So I'll know what to look out for. Just swim until you find underground, and scout the area. Maybe you'll find a fish out there? Everyone looks heartbroken. Karen. Anatoly. Gregor. I'll keep us alive. I promise. She promised. Everyone watches as Mariah leaves the cabin. The silence is deafening. Goodbye. The door shuts behind her. You can faintly hear her yell about how cold the water is. And then silence. Mariah has left the cabin. I'm sure we'll see her again. The rest of the group nods. Everyone stays up, waiting and waiting. The sun is completely set. One by one, each person quietly shuffles off to bed. You get ready for bed and easily pass out. Dead to me is the achievement. Why? You have a strange dream. The two women in front of you could be twins. One of them you recognize, the other is a guest. You ask the guest to sit on a shovel, and then you try pushing it into the oven. Her legs are so strong you can't get her into the oven. You curse at her repeatedly, like this, you hiss. You stretch out your legs until your toes are almost sticking in the coals. You feel four hands on your shoulders and both of them push you in. The familiar smell of smoke and burning hair cause you to throw up on the embers. You can't let it end like this. You rip the metal door off the oven, tearing through the wood logs of the cabin. Screaming, you chase the two. Through the woods, your burns chill with the wind. The guest looks behind her and her eyes widen as she sees you. She's terrified. Your fury rips trees out by their roots, soil from the ground, rocks from their pits. You've never been this angry in your entire life. Their stamina can't last forever. You're gaining on them. As you trample through the field of wheat, the guest throws a piece of cloth behind her. You catch the glint of it in the sun, golden. As if by magic, the earth splits in front of you, creating a chasm of fire below. You fall into the pit, screaming as your eyes begin to sizzle from the heat. Hellfire, fil Hellfire fills your lungs. You're unable to scream anymore. 
You wake in a cold sweat. Okay. What do we do now? Good morning. Do you think she made it to higher ground? I believe in Mariah. Me too. She'll be fine. Right, little guy? So what do we do now? Just wait? Karen. How long? It's almost been a day since she left. Anatoly and Gregor look nervous. Someone needs to go look for her. We need to wait, Karen. Wait for what? The nearest town is miles and miles away. Waiting is all we can do for now. She is pissed. So it could be days before she gets back? What are we supposed to eat? Mice? I mean, yeah. Karen. Karen. I'm sure Anatoly will agree, but we'll discuss next options when we get to it. Uh-oh. Every waking thought is about food now. I never should have eaten that much. I'm... I'm... Karen's hands are involuntarily shaking. Gregor and Anatoly just nod in agreement. They don't even need her to elaborate. You're sure Mariah will make it back? She promised. Everyone retreats to their areas. What do you want to do today? How many more do I have with Karen? I need two more with her. And then I need four with Gregor. And I have none with... I do Karen. She's the closest. What's under the floorboard? Hey. You don't have to lie to me. I know Mariah's not coming back. What do you mean? I don't know where she came up with her being the best swimmer. I guess the only one that would know would be Anatoly. Last summer, Anatoly would watch her swim from the shore. He could have been a lifeguard. Such a good swimmer. She never went under. But if she did, he would have pulled her out easily. Why would, why would she lie about something like that? Karen seems deep in thought. Maybe it's better to leave her alone. You close the door softly. So she, what, 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 so she, so she just drowned. She just drowned herself, basically, instead of starving to death. I can't. Uh, my bad. I can't stop thinking about that vegetable stew. I'd be fine with the bread and jam. I'd be fine with just the strawberries. <laughs> Nobody else laughs. Wow, great joke, bud. <laughs> I would kill for some vegetables right about now. You would, too. I'm gonna try to get some sleep. Good night. Night. You fall asleep quickly, but you only dream about desecrating a corpse? You wake in a cold sweat in a completely different room. Day 8. Good morning. Karen's looking worse. Will you cook for the group? What? Ooh. You take out a cutlet of meat and begin to cook in the oven? You cooked meat. Where did you get that? You ignore Karen's question. What's that smell? Gregor finally gets off the couch. Where did you... Three are looking at you, salivating. You take the charred meat out of the oven, cutting into small cutlets. 
They immediately grab some off the plate, chewing ferociously. You take a piece and immediately devour it. Do you have any more of this? A downward spiral. You ate meat. You explain how the meat is stored securely, hidden so you can ration better this time. I understand. Thank you. Anatoly runs to the bathroom, puking into the toilet. You can hear him sobbing for a few minutes. Yo, we just... We just butchered up that poor girl in our sleep and just cooked her. We just cooked her and served her up on a platter to her friends and they ate her they ate her up so happily. It said they it said they ate her ferociously. Oh my god. Please tell me this isn't her. Please tell me it's like some fucking rotted meat or something like in the basement. It said I couldn't go down there earlier. Karen this taste is Gregor wanders off Anatoly returns looking choked up I was too weak left you some of the meat don't fight this Anatoly m m yo we cooked we cooked up Mariah we cooked her up Anatoly takes cutlet from the plate turning his back to the group as he devours it you can hear him crying. Finally, my focus is coming back. I'm going to read some of those books. Keep them occupied, okay? Karen leaves you with the men. Who do you want to talk to? Anatoly, you can keep crying. I don't want to talk to you. Gregor, what's up, my man? How happy are you? You, you full? Yeah! Hey, thanks for cranking the meat earlier. I was nearly passing out from the hunger pangs. Even if I'm a meat and potatoes kind of guy, I appreciate the vegetarian dishes you made earlier. Really respected Mariah's boundaries. Thank you. Gregor's more dense than you gave him credit for. <laughs> if there's extras, slip me some extra meat. Okay. Gregor. Do you not real? Are you? Is that what he mean? Is this? Is he that dense? He doesn't realize that we cooked up his friend. Going to see how Anatoly's doing. Later. You have the bedroom all to yourself. Where do you want to check first? What's under there? Inside the bird cage on the night sink. I click anything. Underneath the floorboard, you notice a bone sticking out. Is it a human bone? Nope, chicken bone. Gross. Uh, nightstand? Anything? Onion! Don't be a crybaby, it's Onion. just me! Onion! Boy, boy! I was just playing with some of my toys in this Onion. drawer. Onion. You're far too old to be playing with any of them. You're never too old for toys. Anyways, need to attend a secret chump pet boy, meeting. Boy. Smell you later! Onion bounces out of the bedroom. The drawer has various children's toys in it. What's this? A hidden note? June 26, 1862. Another body of a child has been discovered within the city of Zakopane with the remains stuffed into the barrel into a barrel full of potatoes. The cause of death was identical to earlier victims, with significant blood loss due to multiple stab wounds to the stomach. This marks the fourth victim by the butcher of Zakopane in less, less than a month. You take the bloody newspaper with you. You found all of the hidden notes. Oh, okay. Uh, that was the only one. I was. Oh, there, that was meant to. Okay. Hours passed a meal. Are we that person? Is that what's trying to tell me? We're the butcher of Zacopane? Is that what is happening? Hours passed. The meal gave everyone the perseverance to keep going. Eating will just make them hungrier. They're fine now, but soon they'll be begging for more. We've waited long enough. What's for dinner? You calmly explain that you want to ration the meat better this time and there will be no dinner. Fine. I understand. I guess I'd rather eat tomorrow than more today. No arguments? Perfect. Everyone decides to call an early night. You fall asleep instantly tonight. What are we doing? We are a bad man, I bet. You have a strange dream. 
you're having dinner with a blacksmith, but he's not touching his food. The only light in the room comes from the oven. He clears his throat, stroking his beard. I can forge anything, he says. Your eye has been giving you issue issues lately, so you reply. Forge me a new eye, then. You laugh, but then the ropes come out. He ties you to your chair with a long rope to prevent you from struggling. You rip the rope apart without even trying, so a blacksmith uses a thicker rope. No turning back now. He takes a hot poker out of the coals, holding it in front of his face. You can see his beard and eyes watching you. He slowly brings back the poker, aiming carefully for your eye, before plunging it through your skull with a sickening crunch. The force of the blow throws you backwards a few feet. You're unable to break the ropes. You vomit all over your chest as the smell of your decimated eye floods your nostril. The blacksmith st stands over you, spitting on your body. You wake in a cold sweat. Uh, this is not. This is going worse than expected. You wake up to see Gregor looking out the window. He turns to you, not smiling. Take a look out the window. Do you notice anything? <gasps> the flood wires have receded a little bit, but everyone is still bound to the cabin. The trail used to be completely visible. It's gone now. What was that behind the damn tree? Good morning. You looked out the window. Good morning, big. Good morning, big guy. Will Mariah make it back? No. That might, this might sound a little crazy, but every night around 2 a.m., I get to hear her outside. She makes this awful gurgling noise, like she's trying to get out of, get water out of her lungs. Have you heard her, Gregor? Was that her ghost that I saw behind the tree? Sometimes when the rain gets faint, I think I can hear her whispering. We all hear it. I haven't heard anything like that. When she's whispering, it's like she's trying to tell you something, right? <gasps> oh my god. Oh my lord. Yes. That face. Holy hell. I sometimes hear her crying through the radio, but that's just a broadcast. Right? I think we should have another piece of meat for breakfast. One step closer to Mariah. It's what she would have wanted. What's gotten into you, Anatoly? Anatoly's eyes look at you, begging. Bring us another slab. Yo. Please. He clearly doesn't have the stomach for it. I can't get the taste out of my mouth. Please help me. And Anatoly. Gregor looks pained at Anatoly's words. I think he's right. Please, bring us more of that meat. You grab some of the meat from your secret hiding place. You cut it into squares, adding it to the boiling cauldron water. It will taste bland without any seasoning, but you need to serve it up right away. Mmm. 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 What's taking you so long? Boil it faster. It looks almost done. Patience. It's finally finished. You serve the meat in bowls. Gregor drinks the broth first before swallowing the chunks whole, like a duck does when eating bread. Anatoly creates ripples in the broth using his spoons. He isn't eating. I'm sorry about earlier, everyone. I don't know what overtook me. M Mariah. Anatoly begins to weep. You look over at Karen. You didn't notice her even start to eat. There's just an empty bowl now.
Karen is staring right at you. How much more meat is left? You explain how most of it has gone bad. This is the last of it. How could you be so careless again? You remember Karen's knife. You need to think fast. What the hell are we supposed to do now? Wait around again? The storm isn't ending. You clear your throat. Anatoly? Yes. I think tomorrow you should look for Mariah. Most of the meat went bad because it was rotting. And probably just full of water. R Dude. Okay. Okay. Or forage from plants outside. Hi. I think you should go tomorrow, little guy. Nobody else can I identify edible plants like you. Hi. Hi. Please, Anatoly. Please! You just went back out of a few hours. Just find some food. Gregor is right, Anatoly. Maybe you'll find Mariah out there. I think Mariah's fine by herself. He still hasn't accepted what happened yet. She doesn't need anyone's help. But we need your help, Anatoly. That's right, Anatoly. Please, help us. Let me sleep on it. Okay. No problem, little guy. I need to get that knife from Karen. She should not have a knife near her. Everyone shuffles off to the rooms, reading books and knitting to pass the time. You go to bed ravenous. Mariah? Something is approaching. Onion! Onion? Hey! I just hear whispers. Don't, don't be a crybaby, it's just me! Onion! My boy Onion. Not gonna be very sweet today. Boy. I'm worried about Anatoly. Boy, boy. He's gonna cave to peer pressure. Can you stop him from leaving the cabin? You don't answer Onion. Please. Don't you trust me? You shake your head. Um. Got a fun factoid for you. Boy, boy, boy. Did you know that leaving out an unpeeled onion in your room absorbs bacteria? It will help prevent colds and ward off viruses. Onion. That was a lie. The fun factoid of that myth, people actually believed it in the 1500s. Bye -bye. How embarrassing. Who would believe that? Bye -bye. <laughs> There's even a doctor in 1919 who caused a surge of people believing it. Haha. <laughs> Anyways, you know what smells like a raw onion left in a room? Bye -bye. You. It's been a while since your last bath, right? You can't remember. You spoke with Onion? Could smell you before I even came in the room! Onion! Yikes! So, can you stop Anatoly from leaving? I know he has cabin fever, but this is ridiculous. It will be impossible to stop a grown man from leaving. Onion! Please. We don't need another one stalking the hallways. What? Tapping on the windows. Crying through the radio. You have the sudden urge to scream. Why do you think I've been using mouse holes to get around? Onion. Scared to death that I'll run into her. Don't make me tattle the cabbage about you. She can be as mean as potato if you get on her bad side. Onion, onion. Just kidding. She's great. Anyways, when the time comes, just tell Anatoly you care about him and don't want him to leave. Even if it's for me, okay? No. You can trust me. Now, if you excuse me, I need to work on some new ice skates. Wait, wait, wait. They're made of butter slices, so I'll get to skate around the frying pan Onion. tomorrow. Later. I don't think I can stop him. If your mind finally manages to forget everything that happened. You fall asleep again, still ravenous. Day 10. We made it to day 10. All right, guys. We made it to day 10. You have a strange dream. A fox is collecting... Why is it moving? A fox is collecting strange payment in your living room. You despise them, so you put two dogs at the bottom of a sack, then add six chickens on top. The fox smiles at you and leaves. At some point in his journey, the fox will eventually open the sack, and the dogs tear the fox in half. Filled with such loathing for the fox, you gave him the only things you had for food. 
all of those chickens. As the snow piles up outside, you begin to eat whatever you can find. Pillowcases, candles, leather. One day you wake up and you have nothing left to eat. Absolutely nothing. Just an insatiable hunger. A few days later, you go mad and leave the cabin, completely ravenous. A nearby tree looks like charred meat. Your iron teeth cut through the tree bark, tearing your gums apart by the splinters. Your mouth fills quickly with blood. Days later, a deer gallops, gallops by, the first creature in the woods to see your corpse. You wake in a cold sweat. Something smells terrible in the living room. Someone puked in a corner. You wipe it up with a rag to save them the embarrassment. Hi, Anatoly. You're going outside today. Good morning. Good morning, little guy. Well, Anatoly? Bad idea. She's got a plant. What's your decision? I barely slept last night. Her whispers came through one of the holes in the floor. She kept telling me to come outside. Huh? We don't want to. We don't want to rush you. But one of us puked last night. So that's what that smell was. Anatoly, my patience is wearing thin. You have one hour to make a decision. Why so quickly? Hmm. Because I'm not waiting any longer. You can see the glint of Karen's knife under her dress. Best to watch out for that knife. Oh boy, the group disperses. Tension seems to be rising. You have one hour to kill. What do you want to do? Champette, Karen, Anatoly, Gregor. I mean... Karen and I got a good relationship going on and I kind of need that knife. I kind of need to take it away from her. I feel like she's going to use it on me. Karen, how you doing? Hey, bud. Sup? Hey, where's your knife? Hi. Keep this between us. I'm not giving Anatoly a choice today. He's going outside. Do I make myself clear? Anatoly is an adult who can make his own decisions. Do I want to trust Onion? Or get the bad ending? I do not like Anatoly, so you know what, Karen? I like your plan. We'll do, we'll do yours, yes. Good. Thank you for understanding. Karen cracked a smile. Looks like Karen will remember that. Oh, look at that. Greatest relationship ever in the cabin right now. Four hearts, one more, and we're max relationship. Now get everyone together for a meeting, and let's get them to leave. You call everyone together to discuss, discuss the next steps. Let's get them out of the house. We're gonna eat him. Anatoly, you okay, little guy? Anatoly looks pale like he's going to pass out. Anatoly, have you made a decision? Yes. I'll help you all out. I promise. Thank you, Anatoly. Big tears roll down Gregor's cheeks. I'll miss you, big guy. I'll miss you, little guy. Huh. Thank you, Anatoly. I know this wasn't easy, but it's for the best. Bye, little guy! Karen. Yes? I. Gregor looks at you expectantly. Did you want to say anything to Anatoly? You say nothing. Ah, I. Goodbye, Anatoly. Goodbye, everyone. Good luck. Little guy. Anatoly has left the cabin! I don't have to do that voice anymore. Thank you. Okay. Now, does it become even worse because I chose Karen? I have the ultimate good and the ultimate bad right now. Gregor, the, the ever-loving man. And Karen, the ever-psychotic cannibal. See you soon, little guy. Huh. I guess we can, all we can do now is wait. Good night. She is chilling. Karen goes to the bedroom to sleep. I... I didn't tell him the truth. Gregor's getting choked up. I didn't tell him. Missing him already. Gregor curls up on the couch for the night, turning his back to you. Okay. You shut your eyes, quickly falling asleep. You hear a scraping from the floor. <laughs> Found you! <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> you explain how this isn't a good time right now. This is no laughing matter. I'm worried about Gregor. He's as tall as a tree, but as dumb as a brick. What's the root of that? <laughs> Another cornbread classic. You're being very unpopular right now. That's a tree reference. Get it? <laughs> Anyways, you need to protect Gregor from the red-haired woman. Cabbage called an emergency chomp pat meeting and told me to give you this mission. Watch out for that knife and protect Gregor at all costs. Understood. Now, does everyone look like a snack to you? <laughs> I'm not giving you a choice on this. Let's try that again. Protect Gregor at all costs. Now, does everyone look like a snack? I'm not giving you a choice on this. Let's try that again. Okay, protect Gregor at all costs. Say nothing. You're fooling nobody with that act. You've never had hearing lost. Let's go with the non-verbal answer, all right? Protect Gregor at all costs. Okay, I get it. Yes, you nod. <laughs> it's the yeast you can do, right? You tell Brad that pun didn't make sense. <laughs> On a roll today, I'll see you around. Brad hops away, squeezing himself through the mouse hole with a small pop. You fall asleep thinking about what Brad told you. No, I want the bad stuff to happen. You have a strange dream. It's lying on the table in front of you. You take off the glasses first, partially cracked, and set them down next to the workbench. Working the saw, you wrap cuts in an old newspaper. Some of it gets soggy immediately, so you begin drying the cuts with a towel before wrapping. Much better. You hear something approaching, so you clench a fist and gray to strike whatever's coming for you. You wake in a cold sweat. Day 11. You wake up in a completely different place. Did you sleepwalk or... You found some meat. Oh! Hey Anatoly! You're meat now, I guess. Everybody's still asleep. This will be a nice surprise after yesterday's events. You decide to cook breakfast for everyone, cutting each slice fairly thin. You brown each side in the oven. The smell is unique. Karen, ru Karen runs into the kitchen. What is that smell? Give it to me. Now. You don't argue. Karen grabs a cutlet, burning her hands before bringing it to her mouth. She hungrily devours it, barely chewing. She grabs another cutlet off the plate and eats it. You thought she was concerned with rationing. Gregor wakes up from the couch and heads into the kitchen. Oh, God. Already? Gregor looks conflicted, but he succumbs to the hunger. They always do. Gregor eats his food in a few bites, carefully grabbing a second cutlet. Tears start, tears start streaming down his face, but he doesn't make a sound. You join them in the meal, quickly consuming the meat on the table. I can think straight again. We'll be out of here in no time. No need to ration anything now. Karen is sounding more determined than before. I... I'm gonna lie down on the couch. Try to keep this food down. Gregor crawls on the couch, turning his back to you. Karen leans in to whisper. I'm glad Mariah and Anatoly are gone. They were stopping us from bonding properly. How did you get so good at it? You tell Karen. After one bite, it just made me feel whole again. Even with the nightmares, it's worth it. It took a few nights, but I fought back. And now it's all I can think about. I read the book on necropsy. Text is ancient, but the diagrams are beautifully drawn. Very descriptive. How many years did it take you to perfect the craft? You tell her. Yeah, right. I used to tell Mariah that you weren't funny, but that's not true. Sorry about that. You've grown on me. Karen pauses deep in thought. You know Gregor can't swim, right? He'd be the next to leave, but he doesn't stand a chance outside. They always seem to come back, right? In one way or another? Why wait for him to come back? 
Karen hands you a vial of liquid. I think you know what needs to be done. This is a strong anesthetic. Don't ask me how I found it. I want you to slip this into Gregor's mug tonight. This is for the best. He won't feel any pain until he wakes up. All you do is stand back and let me work on him. This request is beyond extreme. Will you do this for me? Why don't you do it? I need to psych myself up for what's next. This is my first time and I want it to be perfect. Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Why don't I, I need one more heart for your relationship, but the Chompettes gave me a mission to save Gregor. But then again, I need one more heart for your relationship. But then again, Bread told me he was on a roll. But I, okay, yes, I'll do it. I knew you would, thank you. You nod. She's learning quickly. She's learning quickly? Am I teaching her the methods? You definitely think Karen will remember that. Bada bing, bada boom. Relationship strong. All five, baby. Karen hands you a vial of mysterious liquid and you add it to Gregor's mug. Gregor, it's been a while since you've had some water. Come drink with us. Ugh. Gregor looks frightened. I can't stop thinking about the little guy. I can't remember what happened before we arrived. It just never ends. I miss Anatoly and Mariah. Let us toast to Anatoly and Mariah. They'll always be inside of us, Gregor. Can't change that now. Gregor begins to weep. You're right. We're having it raw tonight, Gregor. What? Eating raw meat is one of life's great gambles. Get awfully sick or... Gregor slowly puts the meat into his mouth, ignoring the smell. He swallows each bite with a wince of his face. Ugh. Oh. Trying not to get sick. I'll never forget the first time I met Anatoly. We were kids. I was chopping firewood outside the house. Anatoly brought over a butterfly net filled with them. He introduced himself and asked me if I wanted to hold on, hold one of the butterflies. I had never hold, held one before. He told me not to crush it in between my large paws. He did have miniature hands himself, so I did get it. And a... And... Karen... What did you put in this water? Would you do anything to save your friends, Gregor? Of course. Gregor's eyes start to droop. What the hell was Karen's liquid? I think it'd be best to have an early bedtime tonight. Let me help you onto the couch, Gregor. Yeah. Thank you, Karen. Gregor passes out cold. Thank you. I'll do the rest. Even if he screams, please ignore Gregor when he wakes up, okay? You don't want to interrupt Karen with this. We are the butcher. We have to be that butcher from the paper. You leave her alone, going into the bedroom and crawling into the bed and totally slept. Oh, damn it. Again, right now I'm button. Actually, no, let me save. Let me save. This has got... Oh my god, this game. You fall asleep almost instantly. Day 12... Wake up, sleepyhead. Who is behind you? You were having a nightmare. I am still having one. There is someone behind your your ass. There is someone behind your ass. Thanks for letting me practice last night. I did. I think I did a great job. Made us all some breakfast this morning to celebrate. Breakfast with what? Ooh, that's a surprise. What'd she do? Gregor already finished his. Took a few hours, but he caved. Come on, let me show you. You get out of bed and head to the living room. What did you do? My boy, Gregor. Oh my god. What did she do? What was in the liquid? My poor, poor boy. Why? He's a little weak from the blood loss, but don't worry. Bandage him up like a field medic. My... What is it, Gregor? Where are my... 
God, you're stupid. Maybe if you spent as much time reading books as chopping wood, you wouldn't have noticed the pages I was bookmarking in the crop. What? What are you talking about? Do I have to spell it out for you? You can't swim. How are you supposed to help us out when you immediately drown? You'd sink like a log. What? I put some of your limbs away for safe safekeeping. That leg was pretty tasty, huh? Gregor goes pale. How's that for a big breakfast? Ha ha ha. And don't try to crawl away. If you leave this couch, I'll end you. Heh. I don't want any of it to go bad. So we'll have to eat the... We'll have to eat that fresh arm when everything else is gone. Speaking of which, going to start cooking another chunk. I'll leave you two alone to chat. This has gone too far. I would say so. Yeah, this has gone a little too far. Hey. All I wanted was to do was to keep everyone alive and together. But I failed at that. Are you... Are you disappointed in me? Gregor, no! Thank you. That means a lot to me. Growing up, nobody had to tell me to be big and strong. It just happened naturally. My mother always made sure I never went hungry. Seconds, thirds, fourths, and yet I complained my belly was not full. One day on my way home from school, I was walking by the town inn and smelled something amazing coming right out of a pile of trash. I dug through it and discovered a bag. They threw away a meal that was fresh out of the oven for some reason. At least that's what I thought. I became ill with food poisoning. I hugged the toilet and cried for hours. My mother rubbed my back and eventually carried me to bed. I learned nothing from that experience. Like everywhere else, I was just here for the food. I'll never get this foul taste out of my mouth. She's going to keep eating me. I'm sorry. Getting too lightheaded to hold a good conversation. Haha. <laughs> She's going to torture me again. You know that, right? You nod. Gregor goes a little more pale. Can you cover me with a blanket? I've never been this cold. This cabin. It chills me to the bones, or what's left of them. Please, consider it my dying wish. I can cup dip. Thank you. Much warmer now. Watch out for that knife, okay? Gregor begins to look at peace. I... It... No... What the hell do you think you're doing? What the hell do you think you're doing? You tell Karen that Gregor gave up. We could have kept him alive for another week. What's wrong with you? <laughs> no matter. Plenty of food left now. Karen leaves you alone. You head to the kitchen to try to find the other remains. Gregor. You look at the pile of dishes and your mind starts to wander. Hello! Let's play hide and seek. There's five of us to find. Yes, can you find all of us? The red-haired woman should know where the basement key is. And I bet one of us is hiding down there. She's whittling something in the rocking chair right now. So watch out for that knife. Probably best to avoid the knife. Wait. I, I... Isn't that your knife? Why did you let her have it? You shrug? I, uh... As the leader of the Chompettes, it's important you find all of us. So please don't forget yeah! any of us. Good luck. Cabbage rolls away and tries to hide. Why would Cabbage want to play hide and seek right now? You have been neglecting the Chompettes lately. Can't hurt to play along with them, right? You go talk to Karen in the living room. Oh. Looks like Karen's just slicing away at a block of wood. Gregor's remains have been stored for safekeeping. Scrubbed all of the blood out of the couch to save you the trouble. Can I help you? What are you whittling with that knife? Have you seen the basement key anywhere? What are you whittling with that knife? A wooden knife. 
Do you want one? I like my knife back. Oh yeah? I picked it up the first day and you said nothing. Karen looks pleased with herself. She's too happy right now. Hey chef. Hey thief, give me back my knife. Yeah? I'd rather be a thief than a monster. Karen will definitely remember that. Can you grab the tools from the basement? This knife isn't cutting it. Haha. -ha. I mean for the bones. It's terrible for bones. The key should be somewhere in the kitchen. Come back if you get lost, okay? You say goodbye and head for the kitchen. Thankfully, there's not too many places for cabbages to hide. Where do you want to check first? Wood pile. There's nothing. Thankfully, no spiders. A cauldron. You hear some rustling around. Cabbage! We found her! She always picks the same hiding spot. Wee! Cabbage! Well done. As leader of the chomp pets, getting through mouse holes is a chore. Can't find any chomp pets to push me through. So I guess you'll have to help me out. Cabbage has joined the party. Four chompettes to go. What's next, Cabbage? Glad you asked. Keep it up. You'll be a member of the chompettes in no time. You asked Cabbage about the basement key. Did you forget again? <laughs> it's, in, it's right in the nasty oven. There's nothing but a big pile of ash in the oven. You found the basement yeah. key. There it is. That's to the room where we found potato. Check behind the cauldron for the other one. You got the basement entrance key. Let's go find Onion. He's hiding in the bedroom. She's making hide and seek far so... She's making hide and seek far too easy. Chompettes, find Onion. Cabbage rolls down the hallway. Can't hurt to find Onion, right? Explore the bedroom. Found him! Why is it so easy? What's going on? Don't be a crybaby. It's just me. Onion! Onion! Today? Onion! Onion! I'm sweet as a sugar oh, cane. Boy. Honest. Wow, your breath stinks. Drenched head to toe and sweat too. Could smell you coming a mile away. Onion. Gross. Were you scared of the red-haired woman or something? You tell Onion the truth. Whoa. Oh Sounds like I missed some messed up stuff. You get a pass. I'm sorry to hear about Mariah and Atoli and Gregor. But yikes. Oh That's three people gone in less than a month. Not as bad as five people in one night though. Right? I would probably lose my lunch if I had to see that again. Anyways, didn't mean to be rude. I got your back. Onion has joined the party. Hello! Glad to have you join us, boy, Onion. Boy. No problem. There's nothing else to do today. That's not true. I heard Bread making noise in the living room. You know how loud he can get. C -c Bread? The one and only. Chomp it? Let's move out. Jesus. Your party is quickly expanding. Three chompettes left. You're getting a terrible headache, and your face is feeling numb, and your legs aren't moving. Oh well, you do some timed breathing exercise for a few minutes. That seemed to help. You suddenly feel a second wind coming on. Time to get that bread. Time to get that bread, boys. Let's go. You probably stroll up to the living room, happy to be alive. Hmm, bread. You hear bread come out of your mouse, out of the mouse hole. He's taking a sweet time. Found me! Everyone's secretly favorite trumpet, Bread! Don't you loaf me! <laughs> My cousin Cornbread taught me that one. He has hundreds, no, thousands of terrible puns. He's my role model. So what do you need? You tell Bread with about gather You tell Bread about gathering the chompettes together. Jesus. <laughs> That's a pretty crummy idea. Remember what happened last time with Potato? I mean, we all chose to be in that drawer, but this? You're going against the whole grain here. Do you really think we want to go back downstairs? <laughs> Cabbage! Red, we need your help flying Potato. Onion. Miss you, big guy. Come help. I would never let the chomp bets down. <laughs> No need to pass my culinary quiz. I'm coming with you. Bread is joy the party. That's great, Brad. Glad to have you on board, Brad. Yeah. Of course. Wait. Are you drooling? All three chompettes are staring at you. Boy. Are you thinking of eating us? You accidentally lick your lips. Cabbage. Snap out of it. You already ate. We're no good for that. 
You're you glutton. Did they pass out? Holy cow, get them up. It's so heavy. You stumble to your feet. Let's uh go find Raspberry and never speak of this again. I think I heard her over by the basement door. Perfect. Chompets? Yes, Mosey out. What's going on? You have three chompets, you're probably two more to go. Your head feels like it's going to crack open. Your hands have gone completely numb. This one is lasting longer than the others. You focus on wiggling your toes for a minute. You didn't pass out cold on the floor. Two more to go. You go to check out the basement door. We're back to where we started. Where is she? You feel a chill running up your spine. Goosebumps are all over your body. She's here. The birds outside turn silent. You could hear a pin drop. You can almost hear breathing. You feel the sudden urge to scream. You can't sneak up on me. Don't ever try that again. Surprise! Hey, 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 Raspberry! Oh, wow! It's very nice to see you, Cabbage! Yeah! We wouldn't leave you behind, Raspberry. Boy, boy. These chompets are too nice for what type of game this is. Honest! We need your help finding Potato. Yes, Our combined chompet detective skills says he's in the what? basement. Oh, yeah? Let's find Potato and get out of here! Oh. Raspberry has joined the party. One more to go. Don't worry, the basement's already unlocked. Oh crap, the red-haired woman is coming over. Chompets, yes, let's hi. hide out. Karen, all four chompets quickly escape. You pretend to be studying the basement door. You hear Karen creeping up behind you. Found you. You can see the knife out of the corner of Karen's dress. I don't know if I can wait any longer. Karen drops the knife to the floor, walking over to hold you in a loving embrace. I can't wait any longer to tell you that I... What? What is... What is... What? Karen looks into your eyes, laughing as she says it again. I love you. For the first time in ages, a genuine smile appears on your face. It was Karen all along. Your soulmate has finally been found. You create a new life to get devouring hundreds of men, women, and children. What? Laws and governments are powerless to stop your wrath. Investigations into your cabin always result in another meal for the both of you. Your partnership is beautiful. All that oppose you perish. Karen helps you. Karen helps with butchering so your arthritis gets relief. You work to you work together beautifully, making the world a terrible place for future generations. One day, Karen becomes ill. You try everything to prolong her life, but none of the methods work. Karen can no longer walk around the cabin. Her condition worsens, keeping her bound to the bed. You bring her borscht daily, but she can barely eat a bite without coughing. She isn't able to keep down fresh cuts of meat anymore. She is seriously ill. One day, she calls you over to her deathbed between gas for air. Her eyes are filled with terror, but it lessens once she sees you. I, I, Karen tries to say your name, but can't get it out. I, I love you. You nod, crying softly as she tightly grips your hand in fear. Your tears fall on her dress as the last of Karen's air leaves her lungs. Her hand slowly lets go of yours, dropping to her side. You take the knife and wrap her hands around it, putting it in the middle of her chest. Karen. What is going on? I thought she was going to murder me. What? I, I hit the mic, my bad. You were a true cooking companion. See the secret end? What? How did I? Okay, 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 okay. Somehow I hit this. This is a secret ending, apparently, I just hit. I'll tell you a, a story, but do you promise not to laugh? I almost died when I was six. It was probably the coldest winter on record. My parents and I were snowed in. At first, they had enough wood, but that ran out. My father, 
Before their wedding day, he chopped down one of the biggest trees in the forest. He spent months whittling it down, cutting the pieces carefully, measuring the armrests so they fit perfectly, standing it sanding it down so not even a splinter could come out. He named it Mother's Chair, and every Saturday he washed her feet while she sat in it, whistling a tune his grandmother taught him, looking deep into her eyes as he rubbed her ankles. Took him weeks of working on it in secret. He was hyperventilating while he dismantled it. Each heavy breath was a foggy cloud, his tears were freezing into his cheeks. The fire only lasted two days, and later the frostbite turned his fingertips completely black. He cried almost as hard over his fingers as he did the chair. After a while, when the food was running out, he began to search every inch of our cabin, but he finally found out what he finally found what he was looking for, a little mouse. Holding it, wiggling in his hands, must have been painful. Between winching, he divided it into two, one piece for me and one for my mother. How's that for a big breakfast? His corpse was the first I ever saw that was frozen solid. Thank you for listening. Wait, that's not how it happened. <gasps> oh! Okay, 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 okay. So this is what... Okay, so we got the secret ending. So the whole point... So I completely... Went batshit crazy, but I got the good batshit crazy ending. Show me where you keep hiding the meat. Let's tear them apart piece by piece, just like Gregor. Karen looks like she's ready to bury the knife into you. What do you do? The basement? So that's why it's locked. Open it. I have to see the room. You unlock the basement door. Thank you. I'll bring up some cutlets and we'll have a great dinner, okay? See you soon. Karen descends the staircase into the darkness. You lock the basement door. Did you? Did you just lock the door? You block out the screams of rage and bargaining. Given enough time, they will end. You crawl into the bed and go to sleep. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, my brain's about to, like, burst. What is going to happen? You slept in today. The pounding has completely stopped. You really need to go to the bathroom. You decide to open your eyes. What? You must have slept- You must have slept walked to the bathroom last night. The glow of the candle is oddly comforting. The candle blew out. And the door is locked. You find a flashlight in the corner of the bathroom and turn it on. You're in the dark, but you're not alone. Click on objects around the bathroom to get more information or find hidden clues. If you're stuck, just wait a little bit to see the glint of objects to inspect around the bathroom. Just move your cursor. Just move around your cursor to search the room. Cabbage. Hey, Cabbage. Oh. Are you locked in the bathroom again? You tell her about the candle being blown out. <laughs> Maybe you just need to try wiggling a bit. You unlock the bathroom door? Sometimes the simplest method is the best one. Now, if you excuse me, need to conduct the next secret chomp at <laughs> meeting. Later. You quickly make your escape. Well, getting locked in the bathroom is enough excitement for one day. You get under the covers and quickly fall asleep. End of the voyage. Whoa! Please no! Please no! I please the no, whole please no. Karen. Jesus Christ. Just in your imagination again. Karen can't still be able- Hey Karen, what's up? How you doing, bud? Somebody's at the door. You grip the door down, tightly get ready for what's next. What? 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 No! 
Alrighty, guys, I'm gonna leave that episode there for now. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, it looks like we technically finished the game and got the secret ending, but the game's still going for what was supposed to happen. So uh, I will be posting that hopefully with next within sometime this week. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys later. Bye now.